So the A-Level Maths video seemed pretty useful, the link's going to be on screen by the way, so I decided to do one for A-Level Physics as well, because there's a little bit more nuance to it. So what will you study? Well, between the three major exam boards, Edexcel, OCR and AQA, there is about a 95% overlap, with the overlap between Edexcel and OCR being effectively 100% which is really, really useful because it means all resources and all exam papers are useful to everyone. Just like in maths, there are three papers that you're going to sit. However, unlike maths, there are actually set topics that go into each paper. And you should definitely check your specification to double check this, but this, these that I'm about to go through are the actual confirmed ones which are going to be in each paper for now for each exam board. So what does paper one consist of? Paper one consists of units and errors. So that's gonna make a bit more sense once we get into the actual content. Particles and radiation, which again, you should hopefully be familiar with from GCSE maths, uh, physics, and also waves, mechanics and materials, and also electricity. Electricity probably being the hardest topic in paper one, although waves takes a very close second. Paper two consists of thermo thermal physics, so thermodynamics, fields, which is just electric and magnetic fields, nuclear physics, and knowledge from paper one is assumed. So you're going to hear me say that again for paper three, because whenever you sit these papers, there is an idea of synopsis. And what this essentially means is, is that we take physics and we meld it together. So although a question may start off with radiation, it may end up with an electricity question. That's completely and utterly valid for them. Or it may end up with an electric fields question. So keep in mind that there is a bit of a kind of combination of things that take place in each question. So, and the dreaded paper three. Paper three is all about experiments, which you might think is, okay, yeah, that's completely fine. However, there are a ton of experiments that they can ask you to know in your A-level physics. There is about between 50 and 100 required practicals, which you, in theory, should do in your actual kind of lessons. However, let's be honest, 50 plus experiments, it's unlikely you'll do all of them. At least I've never met a student that's done every single one. And there are also other experiments that they can just give to you, which they won't even tell you before the exam. So you should be able to kind of break down their method and understand what they're trying to do, just from your knowledge, which again can be pretty tricky. Also, and especially if you're doing AQA, there is a section B, which involves kind of an applied module. So for Edexcel and OCR, that'll cover things like astrophysics and medical physics. But for AQA, you actually have five different options, and we're going to talk about those a bit later on in the video. It also should be noted that Paper 3 assumes knowledge from the entire specification, which is another reason why it can be a bit of a painful procedure to go through. Just like for all other A-levels, there are going to be mock exams at the end of Year 12, with your real exams being at the end of Year 13. But just like in the maths video, and I go into more detail in that maths video, so please do check that out, I personally believe that the mock exams are as important, if not more important, than your year 13 exams, so please take those seriously. So what about the questions themselves? Well, just like in A-level maths, the questions are fewer, however, they have far more parts. And with physics, it gets a bit interesting. So what they instead try and do is they try and test you on your application of knowledge. So in this case, there are a few questions out there that are going to be, hey, you know, define this, draw this, which is very easy because it's just knowledge, you just need to remember it. But there are far more questions and far more parts where you have to actually kind of apply your understanding to a scenario that you have never been in before, which is one of the main reasons why A-level physics is considered one of the hardest A-levels. You have to really apply your understanding, which means you have to actually know what's going on. Now, there are also multiple choice questions from the majority of the exam boards. And again, you might think, cool, multiple choice, I can guess. Well, there are five options, A to E for each question, which means there's only a 20% chance you'll get it right. And these multiple choice questions, one mark each, are very, very tricky. Some of these really catch people out. And obviously the danger there is, if it's a mark a minute, which it is, you only have 60 seconds to answer each one. So a lot of people will spend too long on the multiple choice and then run out of time for the rest of the paper, even though there are only a few marks for the actual multiple choice. So again, be careful of that. So going back to the whole kind of making sure you understand, again, the link to the Discord is going to be in the description. I'd recommend you join it because again, you can just post questions asking, you know, how, what does this mean? How can you explain this? Why is the answer this? But also you can post your own explanations and get myself or one of the other students to kind of check it over, make sure your understanding is correct, which is incredibly useful. Now, one good thing, so, 
Again, the first good thing is that the papers have specific topics in each. Really nice. The second good thing is that the difficulty curve between year 12 and year 13 is pretty consistent actually. The year 13 content isn't much more difficult than the year 12 content. In fact, art is roughly the same. In fact, the hardest topic pretty consistently tends to be electricity, which is what you study in AS in year 12. So in that sense, it's quite nice because there isn't this massive jump between year 12 and 13. But also with the whole, you know, no difficulty jump, A-level physics is still very difficult, but you just don't want it to kind of, you know, dissuade you from doing physics because it won't get that much harder in year 13. So if you find year 12 hard, that's completely fine. Everyone does. But year 13 won't get much more difficult, unlike in maths, where year 13 is incredibly difficult, year 12, honestly, not too bad. So don't let that dissuade you and let it motivate you. So what are the problems with it? Well, just like in kind of the A-level maths video, the main problem in my opinion, and this is really, really critical, is what I was saying about getting an understanding of the physics. Now, what this requires essentially is having a really damn good teacher. A teacher that can actually break down physics topics and explain them to you and articulate them in a very specific way. Unfortunately, you can't just do a bunch of past papers and expect to get a good grade. You might be able to get a C, maybe a B at a push, but there's A's and A stars, which is what I'm assuming a lot of you are going to be aiming for, are unobtainable unless you actually understand the physics. Now, I don't mean this to scare you, but this means that if you have cover lessons, you aren't going to get any explanation whatsoever, probably. And two, if you have a not so great teacher, you're going to have to take steps early on to kind of fix that again. Joining the Discord is a completely free and kind of time efficient way of getting some explanations for yourself. Also leaving comments and letting me know what videos you want. I'll try and explain a bunch of physics concepts, assuming I have time, because I do have the maths videos to do. And of course, getting tuition in addition to that, if you still need it, or looking for online resources. What you can't do is say, I don't get this in the lesson, I'm gonna go home and read about it, because reading about it will improve your understanding a bit, but it might not bring you to the 100% clarity because the way things are described in textbooks, it's only one way. If that way doesn't make sense to you, then what are you gonna do, right? You need someone else to explain it as well, which is completely fine. Everyone needs that at some point. I had some really good physics lecturers which made things make a lot more sense than they did in A-level. So keep that in mind. A good teacher is going to be absolutely critical for your understanding of A-level physics. Now the other negative, which I mentioned previously, is the absolute ton of practicals they expect you to either know about or have done and explain. And again, in paper three, they don't necessarily give you just practicals that you would have done. So there's between 50 and 100 required practicals. Some examples have even more, but there are also practicals they can just shove at you and go, well, here you go, you know, enjoy, what do you think? So there are a few things here. One, you want to have a decent teacher that can explain the practicals and actually why you do the steps. Again, it's not just about memorizing the practical, it's understanding, because chances are that exact same practical in an exam situation, they may use different equipment. So you need to think, okay, what effect does that have? Why is that good? Why is that bad? Why is that different? Why have they done that? So you need to have an actual understanding. So having a good teacher to explain the practicals to you and why you do certain things, why you may take averages, why you use fiducal marks, things like that. Again, I don't expect those words to necessarily mean anything to you yet, but all of those things need to be going in, on in your head. That is pretty, pretty useful. And again, there aren't many online resources for the practicals themselves. I am potentially considering trying to do, I actually have some space in my house to actually do some practicals and see if I can explain it through on that. I'm just trying to work out the logistics of that exactly and if I'll have time to do it. Lastly, this is actually something that's specific to AQA. You have optional modules. Now you might be thinking, well, why on earth is that a bad thing? I can choose whichever is easiest or choose whichever is like most useful to me. Well, first of all, your teacher's going to decide realistically and you want them to decide. You want the teacher to pick the subject or the topic that they're most familiar with. You don't, if you want to do engineering physics, but they want to teach you turning points, forcing them to teach you engineering physics is not a good move because they might not be able to teach it as well as turning points, okay? So that's one of the main kind of negatives. The second negative is, well, first of all, before we go through the second negative, I have to tell you what the options are, and then I'll explain the negative, and I promise you it's gonna make sense. So here are the options in order. 
So you have turning points, which essentially is studying the historical experiments which gives us our current understanding of the universe, things like Einstein's theory of relativity, the kind of charge on an electron, things like that. The second one is astrophysics, which mixture of calculations and processes that you need to know, like the life cycle of the sun, etc. You have medical physics, which again is mostly kind of radiation, but also magnets and MRIs and accelerating electrons, things like that. Engineering physics, which is basically just more thermodynamics and electronics, which is just more circuits. So I told them in order and here's the issue. The issue is that because some of these optional modules have only run for three years, there is a very, very few practice questions. So yeah, I'm going to do it in order. Turning points is a really good one to do because it's one of the first optional modules. And in fact, it was a compulsory module in the old spec before 2015, which means you have probably around 10 years of papers that you can do for those. So turning points, really, really good. Go to the old spec. The stuff is still in there. Okay. Second one and third one, astrophysics and medical physics is compulsory for Edexcel and OCR, and they teach you the same things. AQA just goes into a bit more detail, which means you can do all of the astrophysics and medical physics questions from AQA, and then hop over to Edexcel and also OCR and do all of their questions, because the overlap is 100%. So that's fine. Now we come on to engineering and electronics. These modules are very, very new. And as a result, they don't have enough, in my opinion, they don't have enough past papers to do. And the reason why I say this is paper three, the kind of back part of it, the section B, is only two or three questions, which means they don't test all of the optional module. So let's say they test half of it each year and you only have three years. That means you may on average only have one and a half questions for each subtopic, which is not enough, right? Only doing one question. That's not enough. Some of them will have two questions. Okay, that's still not enough. For some of the other modules, you're going to be doing 10, 15, 20 questions per topic. So engineering and electronics, it's, it's very, very tricky because there's very little in the way of exam practice and they're not taught in the other two exam boards. So what you'll have to do is maybe look up things like first year university questions to do the engineering physics and things like that and have university textbooks to help you. Very tricky, very difficult indeed. So in terms of that, I would hope for, I'm hoping that you either do turning points, astrophysics or medical physics. And on the bright side, those are the three most popular ones to do. So once again, just like in the A-level maths, how can I help? Well, in terms of YouTube videos, I have a couple of YouTube videos on the mechanics sections, which is the first major topic that you're going to do, or hopefully you'll do in physics. So you can look at those. I'm hoping to do more YouTube videos, but again, it's all based on time. I'm really hoping that I can change hours at work and things like that to do more videos because I really do enjoy doing it. And also live streams. I'm hoping to be able to do some live streams at minimum right before the mocks and the real things to kind of just go through as much as possible because you guys really like the GCSE maths live streams. The second thing is the, again, the Patreon. Currently it's just statistics, but I'm hoping to have some other course type thing for physics as well. Either doing it on Patreon or doing something like Coursera or some other thing like that, because that way it's a one-time fixed payment. The reason why I picked Patreon, by the way, because I didn't explain this in the other video, is that it allows me to add to it regularly. So if you subscribe to the Patreon, you have access to all future content, which means over the next two years, it will be added. Whereas with some of these other course websites, I have to upload the whole thing right now, but I don't have the whole thing. And I don't want you guys paying for like three videos and then I can't add to it, right? I want to be able to add 50 plus videos on all of these different things. So again, maybe Patreon on that. Again, depends on the demand, see how useful it's going to be. But lastly, the way that I definitely can help right now is tuition. I would absolutely adore having an A-level physics class. Physics is my jam. I love teaching it. I'm very, very passionate about it. I enjoy it. And... You know, not to toot my own horn or anything, but apparently I'm pretty good at teaching it. So I would love doing that. So again, if you would like to kind of book your place for September, then do send me an email. In terms of how it's going to work, it's 30 pounds an hour because again, A-level physics tuition is even more expensive than maths tuition because fewer people can teach it. And to be quite frank, fewer people want to teach it. So you, again, you're looking for 40, 50, 60 plus pounds an hour. Whereas I'm going to have small groups, 
no more than six every single week online so we can keep it at like a 30 pound per hour which is a you know, it's more affordable it's a lot cheaper and it, again just email me if you'd like to book a place so again that brings me to the end of the kind of summary for a level physics i want to use the comment section of this video and also the discord as well for any other questions you may have about a level physics i personally will answer them so we have just a huge bank of questions that basically covers everything you could possibly need to want to know about a level physics and again the discord we can have these kinds of discussions as well you can create threads but yeah hopefully that has been useful to you again any questions leave them in the comments or email me and i'll get back to you as soon as humanly possible but until then i hope you have a wonderful summer break